thank you very much for being uh, here. Uh, we have been, uh, you know, um, uh, on parallel trajectories. Uh, uh, I invested in your uh, Bcup uh, fan fund, and and uh, we have been really exploring the implications of uh, blockchain for individuals and society at large for for years. And you are now running. Uh, uh, in the uh, Senate race in Vermont. Congratulations, first of all. And it is a wonderful new adventure. Why are you doing it? Why are you running in the traditional governance system instead of building a new governance system? Yeah, it's, and that's a very good question, right? And a lot of people are like, why would you go do that? Can't you be more effective and make a bigger impact on the world outside of government? And the answer is yes, and I would strongly pr prefer that. I don't want to be a government official. I don't want to be running for a political office. It wasn't on my list of things I want to do. I'm so concerned about our collective future that I feel I have to. I feel I must do it, you know, as an act of moral obligation. And that stems from my view of call it the existing system and whatever future systems may look at like I, I go through the process of you know here's what the future you know we're looking for and here's the future you know the current present reality we're in and how do we get from point A to point B or from A to Z a lot of people ignore those steps you know but as someone that has continually been assisting us in building those systems that get us there I see the process and so we can't ignore the existing system of government or governance that governs over us. Um, if you do, it is going to do things that is going to make our lives and our tools and infrastructure much harder to roll out and perhaps inaccessible to the vast majority of people. And our government is meant to be comprised of us. So my view is we want people in our government that understand what we're doing and the philosophical alignment with the principles of what this country was founded upon, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you know, freedom and sovereignty, you know, Bitcoin and the, the things being built with this technology align perfectly with the original intentions of this country. And I think that we want people in office that understand this technology and understand the role that it plays and how it can make our lives better and improve our nation and improve the quality of life and create a nation that can further work for everyone. I think that we need those voices in our legislative branch of government. I think we need those voices in our executive branch of government. And if I saw a bunch of other people doing it, I wouldn't do it. I'm doing it because I'm not seeing it and hoping to inspire others to do the same. Our government is supposed to be of, for, and by the people, and it's supposed to be public service. And so I hope to inspire other public servants from any walk of life to run for political office, and I hope to inspire more of us that understand the future and how to design the future you know, in these offices. So that's why I'm doing it. The uh, tension between state and federal uh, uh, legislation and regulation is apparent in many areas. Uh, the simplest example is cannabis, where in many states it's more liberalized, but it is still criminalized on the federal level. Uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, President Biden uh, framed uh, Bitcoin as a threat to the U.S. national security. Uh, now, whether it is or it is not, it is interesting that uh, you uh, represent a, a, a very different course uh, where blockchain and the technologies that it enables will potentially support what you call Gov3, uh, a, a new way of uh, empowering and emancipating individuals and organizations to participate actively uh, in building uh, the, the, the common good while at the same time it looks like at the federal uh, level uh, this is not uh, perceived uh, that way at all. So that is already an important bridge that, that you potentially will need to, to build, as well as 
uh, any regulations that may be adopted, whether in Vermont or in other states, and at the federal level, must be potentially m more uh, upgradable, more adaptable, able to evolve faster than it has been the case uh, in previous uh, decades. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I mean, most of us are pro-decentralization or uh, more distributed authority. The idea of a greater and greater, more centralized federal government, I don't think is in line with what the founding fathers wanted, nor is it, I think, what's in our collective best interest. You know, I, I love the fact that we've got 50 states from which to experiment. The state should be leading these efforts, right? I want to see more power in the hands of the municipalities, the counties, and the states. Give them more autonomy. The idea that people that don't walk your street, your sidewalks, don't drive on your roads, are making decisions for you just doesn't feel like the right model. It's one size fits all. And uh, I hope to see more of our governors, you know, fighting for their state's rights and more autonomy. Um, and really happy to see some of uh, that that's happened the last uh, uh, couple of years. And so I'm all about supporting the, uh, the states. I'm obviously actively, uh, I, I'd be doing more work within the states domestically if I wasn't talking to so many foreign states. Uh, I can only be so many places at once. I'm thinking about getting those portals and, and being able to ship them places so that I can be present as a hologram. You know, I can travel to five, you know, five places in the world simultaneously by basically having a, uh, the holodeck. I, I actually uh, rented a mime uh, and I put an iPad on his face so that I could be in multiple conferences at the time. Unfortunately, he was, as a consequence, blind because uh, he couldn't see, so he had to be guided. Everyone was uh, uh, saying, hey, you, you are so slim, David. How, uh, how is it uh, going? But, and, 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 and the other thing is, I don't think that we want the federal government leading with these things. We don't have enough information to know what the right answer is. The wonderful thing about empowering the states to make these decisions is we can get, like Baskin Robbins, different flavors of regulation or legislation. We, you want that because you need that sandbox for experimentation so that you find the optimal outcome before you put that legislation into the federal government. It seems reckless to me for the federal government to be the first to move and then to impose its will on all the states without having sufficient data. Let the states lead, let the states experiment, and from there, we have better information to make uh, decisions at a, at a larger scale. That just seems like common sense to me in terms of sequence, like cart before horse. The federal government leading is like putting the cart before the horse. Let the horse lead, which is the states. The, the uh, reg tech, right, golf tech, reg tech, mm -hmm. uh, uh, seems to be uh, an area where the European Union uh, believes they should be uh, leading the way uh, privacy uh, legislation was uh, adopted there and then became necessary for other jurisdictions also to follow. Uh, they are doing it in artificial intelligence as well. And just a few weeks ago, uh, the European Parliament uh, adopted a legislation that imposes a, a complete uh, verification of uh, the destination, identity, and address for non-custodial uh, uh, Bitcoin or crypto transfers, regardless of the amount. In banks, already you um, document these transactions for amounts above ten thousand dollars, but oh, yeah, here like, we are talking about one cent or whatever amount. Again, this is why I talk about this and why I'm running for office. Because if we don't want those types of outcomes, we have to do something about it. Ignore it at your peril. It's my belief that if we ignore the government and we do not engage with the government, they may make decisions being misinformed. Uh, or uninformed, right? It's important that we're engaging because it's human nature to fear that which you don't understand. 
and you conquer fear with knowledge. So I want to see an informed government. You know, and there's a way that we can all do this. Inform your elected officials. Reach out to them. They are public officials, and you can reach them. Try to teach them what's going on here. Because I've not seen any critical thinker take a look at what we're doing and sincerely not agree with us. The people that I've seen that are well-informed, that disagree with us, are talking their book. They're serving legacy systems, you know, or it's in their economic interest. I've not seen any critical thinker be able to make a compelling argument as to why these things shouldn't happen. They just repeat the same bad lines. You know, we are talking about building systems that create a more fair world, right? We're talking about building systems that democratize access to critical utility and tools to be able to live a life of prosperity, to have opportunity, right? Everything in here, this is, this is good stuff. This makes the world a better place. And I don't understand how someone can argue against these things if you've taken the time to learn. And every single government official I've met is genuinely interested. And they're genu- generally not informed because we haven't taken the time to inform them. You know, I'm doing this hopefully to change that so that we don't have bad legislation. You avoid bad legislation by putting people in office that understand what's happening, that can be a champion, to be a gladiator, to defend the freedoms and the views and the things that we hold dear, to defend those things and fight for those things. You know, to educate others. That's why it's important we get involved. As I like to say, the future is going to happen to you or with you. I I, I request everyone's participation. If we want to build that better world, you have to have an opinion and you have to be a part of the process. Representative democracy was about delegating the decision making to professional politicians. Uh, uh, Is Gov3 going to... Uh, require and hopefully achieve uh, a more universal engagement and how will people who have other things to do too uh, maintain the level of participation that we haven't really seen in the DAO experiments uh, that we uh, ran in the past few years? Yeah, so I think what we've learned looking at the information that we've seen is that liquid democracy is probably not going to work. That representative democracy is the right sort of idea to delegate that decision-making to people that are going to spend the time to be able to make those decisions. I think that whatever experiments we've run have reaffirmed the representative democracy. But how do we create a more representative democracy? We have new tools that allow for new ways to engage, for our elected officials to engage with us, the constituents, and for our constituents to engage with them, our elected officials. There are new tools that I think can improve on that process in many ways, but I think that the, the delegation, right, the de- is still likely the, uh, the, the right answer because most people are not going to drop everything they're doing in life and make it their focus to be informed enough to make those decisions. And so we still need to delegate that responsibility, but we need to choose wisely who we give that power to, right? We need to make sure that we're giving that power to people that are truly using it in service, not to themselves, but everyone else that they've sworn to represent. And this is where I have concerns about career politicians. There are benefits of being your, it being your career. You understand how the system works. You understand how to get things done. But unfortunately, there are too many vulnerabilities on that path that makes it easier to influence those people and control those people, which I think we've seen in terms of the influence of special interests. Because... The unfortunate reality is, and and don't hate the player, hate the game, right? I've not met people when I talk to government officials that 
where I walk away thinking that they've got bad intentions. I, that's, that has not been my experience. It's, there's a system design problem. These elected officials that if they want to be elected have to go get money. And they can only get a little bit of money from the people because there's a bunch of limits in place that make it so they can't get much money from the people. And so then they rely on their political party that can take as much money as they want without any disclosures, as well as on or things like super PACs that can also take in very large amounts of money. And then those organizations effectively control those politicians because those politicians are beholden to those organizations because they need them to be able to get into office and they need them to be able to stay in office. And so this is a, this is a problem we have to fix, right? And, and there's a lot of ways that we can do that. The most important thing is by being an informed voter. Like, so, don't, don't allow advertisements yeah, to, to shape your decision. To shape your decision. Like, literally ignore the political ads. The political ads are ways for money to be used as a tool to get control over your elected officials. And if you allow those advertisements to influence your decisions, you are perpetuating that problem. It's not that much work to take a look at who's on the ballot. What's the platform? And, and take a look at that platform and to determine and forget the political party they represent. Look at the person and understand, is this a person that I think is going to represent you know, me well? Is this the type of person that I want representing me at a local level, at a state level, at a federal level? Right? And it's not that much work. It's very lazy just to say, I'm going to vote for the blue team or the red team. A lot of the problems we have also come from that. It's like if you've ever hired a law firm. Just because there's a, a, a beautiful brand on the firm doesn't mean all those lawyers are the same. They're individuals. And it's also just like a sports team. You know, just, it doesn't mean they're all all-stars, right? If you can pick a government from you know, everywhere, why wouldn't you pick the best players from all the teams? Why would you say, I'm only selecting the, 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 the Lakers? You know, when you can build an all-star team. Like, and, and, and you need to think about this more like it's fantasy football. And when you start to think about it from that perspective, the political powers start to lose their power as well. When you say, I'm going to be lazy and just check the box and say, I only vote D up and down the line or vote R up and down the line, you are perpetuating the problem. And uh, those of uh, the uh, viewers who want to follow your advice and uh, get deep uh, uh, in the topics and the platform, where can they go to check out what uh, are the positions that you represent? Well, you can follow me on you know, all the social media platforms. Uh, and if you're interested specifically in the things that I'm doing around the campaign, uh, we brock the vote at brock.vote. Very good. Thank you very much, Brock. All right. Thank you. It's so good to see you. It's, it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Oh, yeah. And, and now it's, it, this is where it starts to get really yeah, interesting. Right. Interesting, absolutely.